Wednesday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's open for only five children, and you don't have to pay but $2 fee for each session. Children involved in arts, music, uh, storytelling, free play, pre-math, and pre-language skills. All you have to do is to call 424-4391. The King is Coming Bible Institute that's directed by Dean Callender. This evening celebrated the grand opening of a religious art gallery. The gallery was open today from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Tea was served. Religious work done by local artists was on display in the gallery, along with fine old prints done by some of the world's most famous artists. I would like certainly that you that those exhibits would stay up where we all could get to see them next week. Be sure and look out for the King is Coming Bible Institute. And those of you that have not visited that institute, I would certainly like for you to visit the King is Coming Bible Institute. Soloway Auto Supply Company, located in the heart of the east side in Oklahoma City, would like to extend holiday greetings to all of you wherever you are. Sir Charles of Tell is exclusively from, everything is tellingly made from the office of Sir Charles the Tailor. Sir Charles is selling custom tailored shirts. Now, if you want to buy some Christmas presents, why don't you consider a custom tailored shirt? And also, he has a special on all silk Italian neckties. And you buy two, you get one free. That's an ideal Christmas gift for the person that you love most. You may call 733-7600 or you may go to 6225 Southeast 15th Street in Midwest, in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Brother President, the story of Martin Luther King will be shown tonight at 8 p.m. at the House of Bingo. It's time now for you to make preparation and get in your automobiles or get your cab and go to see Brother President, the story of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the courageous people of his time. Those that saw the show last night, last Sunday night, are still talking about the kind of show and that everybody should see the show. Well, tonight we will have some very distinguished guests there looking at the show, and you will be there. That's at the House of Bingo, 3641 North Every Street in the Northeast Shopping Area. Reverend Gory James is on his way to a meeting in the League of Cities. He will be with us next week. In the meantime, I have good news for those of you out in Spencer area. Reverend James is looking out for your interest, and I want to repeat that. Reverend James will be here next week, but before he left town, he has done some things that will help to ease the problem that we are facing. So I am saying to you, leave it to Reverend James because he's getting ready to take care of the situation. Segregation continues to face many Oklahomans. Have you been out to the zoo lately? You remember Lewis Turner resigned as assistant director of the Oklahoma City Zoo? His position was advertised and applications taken. The position was offered to a guy who accepted it, but he later found a better job. No other applicants were considered, but Jean Ann Whiteman was hired as an, in as an administrative manager. She was a white female who's a personal friend of Lawrence Curtis, who lives out in Nichols Hills. She has um, been teaching sculpture out of her home. When she arrived at the zoo, there were three black women in supervisory positions. Two were acting supervisors, the other a permanent position. One was given a workload that no one person could handle and pressure to the point that she quit. Therefore, she never had the opportunity to become permanently employed. The second lady applied for the position she was holding on a temporary basis, but a white male who had been there less than four months was accepted instead. Plus, this meant that she would have to train him. Rather than train someone to take a job, she quit. The third lady's position was given a note title and posted. Everyone in the zoo knew she was losing the job and knew who was replacing her due to a leak and some bragging. Sure enough, the man was hired and she was expected to train him. All three of the ladies have filed racial discrimination suits with the EEOC, including the director's secretary, who was fired due to a rumor. Now, it'd be interesting to, for us not only to watch the animals at the zoo, but watch the people that are working at the zoo. 
Today's program is going to be quite controversial because today we are going to deal with a very controversial assignment and we want to know what you, the public, think. We are talking about integration of the Oklahoma City school system or resegregation of the system. At last, the plan is out. It was booked as a secret plan. It was so secretive until no one knew it until the Board of Education met, and that plan was revealed. Now, in order to understand that plan, today I would like for you to walk with me down the pages of black history. I would like for you to walk with me during the days, dark days of slavery, when blacks were prohibited to learn to read or write by law. I want you to follow this black person that was dreaming of a better day when he or she could learn to read and write. What would be a good example? Maybe it was Frederick Douglass who realized that the little white kids knew how to read and he did not. What Frederick Douglass did was very simple. He would go up to a white boy and say to him, I bet you don't know what this word is. And the boy would tell him that word is thee. And then Frederick Douglass would go back to his slave quarters and study that word. Once he found out one word, he would go back and he did it again. And I dare you to read some of the works of Frederick Douglass. Yes, black people have always been hungry for an education, realizing that an education is a must in a type of world that we live in today. But let us look at the Civil War. Let's look at the day when the good news came that blacks were free. Free and ignorant of the bookworm. Of the bookworms and the book worlds and the things that were to be found in those books. And so it was fitting that the federal government supplied Fried Friedman Baruch's. And on top of that, there were many missionaries that came to the South to teach blacks how to read and write. The story was a long one. A long, hard story. It was years of separate and unequal schools. I would like to repeat that. It was years of separate and unequal schools. Let us read from Oklahoma's law. The separation of races. The public schools of the state of Oklahoma shall be organized and maintained upon a complete plan of segregation between the white and colored races. Then in the law, in section 5 and number 2, part 2, they defined what colored meant. They went on to define the memberships of separate schools. Teachers permitting child to attend school of other race, any teacher in the state of Oklahoma who shall willfully and knowingly allow any child of the colored race to attend the school maintained for the white race or allow any white child to attend the school maintained for the colored race shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction shall be fined in any sum not less than $10, nor more than $50. And his certificate shall be canceled and he shall not receive another certi certificate until the term of one year. Section 5 explains why blacks must attend one school and whites another. Section 5 7 say white persons attending institutions receiving colored pupils. It shall be unlawful for any white person to attend any school in which there are blacks. That was the law in the state of Oklahoma. But time marched on. Time marched on. In May of 1954, the date was May 17th, the case Brown versus the Topeka Board of Education. A little girl named Linda Brown stood in front of the Supreme Court, paid for by the NACP, case argued by Thurgood Marshall. And as that little girl stood there, the dreams and the hopes of blacks all over the world and freedom-loving whites were with her. And then the Chief Justice spoke. The Chief Justice said that segregation has no place in education. And he went a step further and said that when you separate the races, even though the facilities are the same, it is inherently unequal. That was in 1954. Oklahoma City School Board has long supported separate but equal education. It was so equal that a black woman by the name of Emma Freeman stood in Judge Vault's court because as a black teacher at Douglas High School, she received one 
salary, and the white teachers with the same qualifications received another one. To such an extent, the judge vault say to the Oklahoma City Board of Education, no board, you're wrong. Your separate but equal philosophy is not working here. Emma Lou Freeman must receive the same salary based upon her qualifications and experience as any other teacher. And today, black teachers all over the school system are receiving equal pay, not to because of the Board of Education, but because of a black woman named Emma Freeman. I had the opportunity to attend meetings when Oklahoma City was wrestling with the problems of integration of schools. I heard Foster Esters make a cry for separate schools. But then I remember quite well Dr. Alfonso L. Dow, a black optometrist. Dr. Dow asked the Board of Education, this liberal Board of Education, this friend of education, to allow his son to attend Northeast High School. Dr. Dow's son was turned down. But being a fighter, Dr. Dow and his son Robert went directly to the federal district court. And the federal district court, Judge Luther H. Bohanna, ruled that Oklahoma City Board of Education must take positive and affirmative steps to eliminate racial segregation in public schools. Now let me ask you to get out your pencil and paper. Tell me a black principal at an integrated school before the Dow decision. Give me the names of at least 10 black teachers that were working in integrated situation before the Dow decision. The Board of Education had made it clear that the black teachers were not going to be hired, let alone talking about black administrators, until the Dow decision. Thank you, Dr. Dow. Thank those of us that had the opportunity to serve in integrated schools. Should salute Dr. Dow because there will be no assistant superintendent of school. There will be no black school principals and black school personnel director without Dr. Dow because it was a Dow case. Let me repeat it. Let me say it out loud. It was a Dow case that made it possible for somebody as black as Clara Looper to teach at Northwest Classen High School and John Marshall High School. And may God let me forget many things, but oh God, please do not let me forget. Let, don't let me forget the people that had made it possible for me to experience an integrated situation. Now the question that confronts us is a big secret plan. I have some questions to ask. I have some questions to ask, and I want you, the public, to help me with an answer. Because as I see that proposed plan that was submitted to the Board of Education by three of our board members, Mrs. Betty Hill, Dr. Clyde Muse, and President Susan Herms. Now this committee was appointed on July 16, 1984. The committee was appointed to study the I-89 elementary K-5 grade school with regard to first, neighborhood racial makeup, secondly, to potential busing reduction, third, to possible boundary changes, and fourth, to possible grade realignments. The committee reported back to the board with recommendations, and those are the recommendations that I want you, the public, to look at. Before we bring these recommendations, though, history has a way of leaving something to keep us moving. History has a way of saying to us that there is a way. There will be a way made out of no way. History tells us that. But to understand the history of our people, to understand the people that have died, suffered for an integrated society, come with us. Come with us to Washington, D.C. in the year of our Lord, 1963. And let us hear from Martin Luther King and his dream. Tonight, I have a dream by Martin Luther King Jr. will be presented by Anna Slaughter. And here she is. I am happy to join with you today 
in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. Five score years ago, a great American, in whose symbolic shadow we stand, signed the Emancipation Proclamation. This momentous decree came as a great beacon light of hope to millions of Negro slaves who had been seared in the flames of withering injustice. It came as a joyous daybreak to end the long night of captivity. But 100 years later, we must face the tragic fact that the Negro is still not free. 100 years later, the life of the Negro is sadly crippled by the manacles of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. 100 years later, the Negro is still languishing in the corners of American society and finds himself in exile in his own land. So we have come here today to dramatize an appalling condition. In a sense, we have come to our nation's capital to cash a check. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. The note was a promise that all men would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as the citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro a bad check, a check which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in this great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cash this check. A check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. We have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to open the doors of opportunity to all of God's children. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksand of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. It would be fatal for the nation to overlook the urgency of the moment and to underestimate the determination of the Negro. This sweltering summer of the Negro's legitimate discontent will not pass until there is an invigorating autumn of freedom and equality. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. And those who hope that the Negro needed to blow off steam and will now be content will have a rude awakening if this nation returns to business as usual. There will be neither tranquility in America or rest until the Negro is guaranteed his citizenship rights. The whirlwinds of revolt will continue to shake the foundations of our nation until the bright day of justice arrives. And as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall march ahead. We cannot turn back. There are those who are asking the devotees of civil rights, when will you be satisfied? We will never be satisfied as long as the Negro is a victim of the unspeakable horrors of police brutality. We will never be satisfied as long as our bodies, heavy with fatigue of travel, cannot gain the lodging in motels of the highways and hotels of the city. We can never be satisfied as long as the Negro's basic mobility is from a smaller ghetto to a larger one. We can never be satisfied as long as the a Negro in Mississippi cannot vote, and a Negro in New York believes he has nothing to vote for. No, no, we're not satisfied, and we will not be satisfied until justice rolled down the waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. I say to you today, my friends, in spite of the difficulties and frustration of the moment, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. 
I have a dream that one day on the hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, even in the state of Mississippi, a desert state sweltering with the heat of injustice and oppression will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that one day my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day the state of Alabama, whose governor's lips are presently dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, will be able to join hands with little white boys and little white girls and walk together as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream they want, that one day every valley, valley shall be exalted. Every hill and mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plains, and the crooked places will be made straight, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is the faith which I return to the South. With this faith, we shall be able to hew out of the mountain of despair a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful sympathy of brotherhood. And with this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, and to stand up to freedom together, knowing that we will be free someday. And this will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. And if America is to be a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom ring from the prodigious hills of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous peaks of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi. From every mountainside, let freedom ring. When we let freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we'll be able to speed up the day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God almighty, we are free at last. So it was that Dr. Martin Luther King spoke to us in August. Now the question comes, will the Board of Education let freedom ring? Let us look at the proposed plan. The proposed plan calls for the resegregation of schools. Now I would like to tell you that again, because I've just been told that many of you black people out there in Radio Land that are in favor of resegregating black uh, schools, going back to segregation. The proposed schools with proposed enrollments of black students in 1984 and 85 will be at Edgemere School, 50% black. Edward School, 95.4 black. At King School, 99.1% black. At Polk School, 98.8% .8 black. North Highland, 93.9% .9 black. Truman Elementary School, 99.4% black. The plan also calls for, let's look at Adams School, 7.1% black. Uh, Calvin, what will it be at Columbus School? At Columbus School, it will be 6.1% black. Coolidge? At Coolidge, it will be 46 black. And at uh, Page Woodson, it will be 96.7% Oh, let's not put black. that point six, seven. That's 97%. That's 97. It is hard to get a point. Okay. Person, Polk. At Polk, it's 
but actually 99% black. Okay, we could go down the figures, and I want those of you out, out on Radio Land, don't take my word for it. Go down to the Board of Education and ask them to see the proposed school with proposed enrollment and the percentage of black students. Now, let me give you the shocker. I hate to give you this, but I've got to give it to you because you've got to know. According to this plan, there will be no fifth year centers on the northeast side of Oklahoma City. There will be two on the southeast side, south part of Oklahoma City. Capitol Hill Middle will become a fifth year center, 2717 South Robinson, Webster, 6608 South Santa Fe, Classen, 1901 North Ellison, Eisenhower, 1301 Northeast 101 Street. 100, uh, right. Green Pastures, Northeast 42nd, and Post Road. But once again, today, all of the fifth grade year centers are on the Northeast side, but according to this new plan, a black kid will go to a 98% segregated school, then be put into a fifth year center, either in the south part of town or the north part of town. Then they will head off to the various high schools. Now, to me, that is the worst plan that I have ever heard of in my life. I have never, and I didn't think that I would live to see the day that a black member of the Board of Education would be the chairperson of a committee that would bring back the resegregation of schools. I had the opportunity to talk to Dr. Mukes. And Dr. Mukes explained that this was the only way that it could be done. I asked Dr. Mukes if he would consider allowing some experts to come into the Oklahoma City School District and look at the plan. The plan is supposed to be voted on on December the 17th. I asked him to let those people from the legal department of NACP and the educational department of NACP look at it. And Dr. Mukes was very honest with me. He told me that I was one of the ones that was complaining and he could not do it just on my word. I would have to present more developments. I also told Dr. Mews that I do not believe that the members of the board, with all due respect for the long hours that they worked, I do not believe that they have the necessary qualifications to put together a plan for the entire Oklahoma City school system. Now, they are talking about neighborhood schools. Neighborhood schools are nothing but segregated schools. I would like to repeat that. Neighborhood schools, that's the platform Ronald Reagan ran on. Neighborhood schools, that's the platform George Wallace ran on. Neighborhood schools, that's Faubus's plan. Neighborhood schools, then why don't we have neighborhood churches? Neighborhood schools. Now I heard uh, people talking about, I don't want my child to get on the bus. Well, I am the mother of an 11 year old. And I would rather for Shelly to get on a bus at 1 a.m. in the morning and ride to an integrated school than to grow up in a segregated society. Now, my reasons are very simple. The world has changed and has turned over many times since those of us were in segregated places. The whole aspect of living in an integrated society is at stake. Now, we have to make choices. Sure, we have to make choices. If we could segregate ourselves in working situations, if we could se segregate ourselves by testing, then I would say, okay, let's do it. But I believe what Dr. Kenneth Clark wrote, segregation in education. Although the buildings are the same, the facilities are the same, the supplies are the same. Dr. Kenneth Clark, a noted psychologist say, and psychiatrist say they are inherently unequal. But the Board of Education is saying, take a black child, put him into a segregated school for the first four years of his life, where friendships are made, then put him into an integrated fifth grade center, and he will keep up with everybody. Now, integration, if we were just integrating American whites, maybe I could see some validity in the plan. But when you say whites, you're talking about Germans, you're talking about people that come from England, you're talking about the Russians, you're talking about the Czechoslovakians, you're talking about the Japanese, you're talking about people from all over the world. Now the big question is, 
What is worthwhile? And I hear people crying, poor little black kids standing on the streets. Nobody talked about tests. The test scores in the Oklahoma City school system have improved. Blacks are leading the pack in a lot of our schools, but they started out on an integrated basis. Now, suppose I go to a school for the first four years of my life where I'm not making any white friends, and then I go into a fifth-year center. How can I get any leadership positions when the majority has been separated from, from the minority? How am I going to survive? Now, those of us that are old can easily say, I don't mind the cold. Well, I can say one thing. You haven't seen no coldness until you see our kids trying to compete in the 21st century with people that have been exposed to people from all over the world. Now, today, I'm not speaking to anyone, and Reverend Mukes, you're right. Nobody has elected me for anything. I can only speak for those of us in my house. I can only say that segregation to me is wrong, whether you dress it up in a proposed plan and you tell me it's, it's no other way. Well, I can tell you what I believe. I believe that God can take away and make no way and make a way out of it. I don't believe the school board of education and the white citizens that want to go back to segregation and neighborhood schools are so powerful that they can de deny to black children that might have the answer to cancel the right to survive. I don't believe that. But we will leave it to the people in Oklahoma because let nobody fool you. This plan will resegregate the school. And people telling us about the northeast side of Oklahoma City is going down. Oh, let's take for granted it is going down. I would rather go down fighting for integration than to stand up fighting for segregation. Integrate, segregation is an evil, according to Dr. Martin Luther King. And any time you submit or condone to segregation, you are condoning an evil. I want to hear from you. And the issue is, how many of you out there in Radio Land want to go back to segregated schools? And how many of you are willing to move and sacrifice for integrated schools? I know my students are better, white students are better because they've had the experience to be exposed to a black teacher. And I know black students are better because they've had the opportunity to be exposed to whites. Well, that's the way I feel. Now, what the parents can do to change this plan and they can go out and make their feelings known because I was told this evening that you, the people in Oklahoma, wanted to go back to segregation because you have no other choice. Now, I asked Dr. Mukes who came, did he seek the advice of anyone in his district? Did he seek the advice of the staff and the people? And he told me that I was questioning his ability and he was elected to represent the people. As I understand representatives, you represent the people, but you can't represent the people until you know what the people want. I'm very proud of the fact that we have had integration. And I would like to apologize to you, Dr. Martin Luther King, because I didn't believe that I would live to see the day that black people will be fighting for neighborhood schools. What neighborhood schools did when we integrated, we got rid of all of the black teachers and the black administrators. And it seems to me, if I can read what's happening in Oklahoma City, last year there were no black head principals hired because the white principals complained. Now, they say it will save money. Okay, let's take for granted it does save money. What is the most important? Saving money or saving our children? What's actually happening, people in Oklahoma City school system, these kids are building up some bridges of understanding and of love and of concern. A lot of people don't want that to happen. And if it should happen, remember one thing. Clara Looper has made her stand clear. I don't know what the future holds for me, and it doesn't make any difference now what the future holds for me. But I want to use the last days of my life crying out for integration. I would like for you to call 424-3376, and let's take, let's, let's see where you stand. I want you to call and say, I'm for resegregation, which is this proposed plan. Let's call it by my name. It's a baking powder plan, where you put black kids in a can of baking powders, so let them stay over here. Then in the fifth grade center, they will blossom out and meet with everybody, the baking powder plan. They call it the proposed plan for the Oklahoma City school system. I'm telling it like I see it, and as for my future, it doesn't make any difference now. It doesn't make any difference now because I know that if it were not for working in an integrated society, maybe I could go back. But it was a T.
teacher that spoke at a class reunion, and he said, I can't go back home because things have changed too much. I would like to, but I can't go back home. This portion of our program has been brought to you by Roth Film Loan, 1801 Robert H. Roth Street here in Oklahoma City. By Temp and Sons Film Home, 2801 North Kelly, here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. By Shaw's Siesta Motel, located right in the heart of Oklahoma City. And at Shaw's, you can also send telegrams. All you have to do is go up to the 1800 block on Northeast 23rd Street here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Brother President, the story of Martin Luther King Jr. will be shown at the House of Bingo, 3641 North Everest. Now you can play bingo every night. You can play bingo every night at the House of Bingo, 3641 North Everest Street here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The M&W Weldon Company would like to extend holiday greetings to you wherever you are. The M&W Weldon Company, located on Northeast 23rd Street and 2600 Block, would like to say to you, have a happy holiday season. Holiday greetings from Seals Cleaners in the Northeast Shopping Center. Seals Cleaners, ready to serve you. I want you to be sure and call me here at 424-3376. I want you to call me and say, are you in favor of resegregation? Or are you going to tell your child that I cannot protect you? You're going to have to get out there and get it. Oh, yes, you're going to have to do it. This portion of our program certainly is brought to you by Pilot's Funeral Home. And we have a special message that we will give you next week from the Pilot's Funeral Home in the Spencer area. Holiday greetings are extended to you from Dr. A.L. Dial of the Dial Clinic, located here in Oklahoma City, and no, it's no secret, he's the best optometrist in town. Moore's 24 Bail Bundin Service. James R. Moore will give you fast service. All you have to do is call him at 236-4937. Our next Tuesday, call him at 427-8080. He will give away, he will get you out of jail 24 hours. Holiday greetings from Evelyn's Fashion Lady, 1512 Northwest 23rd Street, here in Oklahoma City. The telephone number is 524-2002. That's Evelyn's Fashion Lady, 1512 Northwest 23rd Street. As we go through the pages of history, we would like to say thanks for those of you that have supported the advertisers that advertise on KAEZ Radio in Oklahoma City. And speaking about what can't do, somebody told Mr. Russell Pe Perry that he couldn't put together a paper, and now he has a chronicle and going on. Somebody told Jimmy, Jimmy Miller that he couldn't put together a radio station, but we have one, and you're looking at it. Don't tell me about can't, because can't, it really is a lazy man's excuse to Teachers. I know what has been happening to black teachers. How, how is it running? How many are Mrs. supporting? Hoover, I want to report that they are in your corner. And some one lady who is Mrs. Hickens, she called and she says she's here from California and she's out there fighting for uh, for schools to not go back to where we were. And she wanted, I'm not going to say what she's wondered about the people here in Oklahoma City. She wondered if we were something, and I'm not going to say what she said because she says she's in your corner 100% and thank you for thinking as you are. Well, thank God. I can't go back. That's what the man said. You can't go back because things are changing. We're going to have to work in the 21st century. But one thing that we can do, we can talk about the Girl Scouts here in Oklahoma City. I've invited Toby Smith here today from the Red Redlands Girl Scout, Scouts. How are we doing in volunteer work in the, risk, uh, the, the uh, Girl Scouts? Well, Ms. Looper, we are not doing very well in Northeast Oklahoma City. Um, we do have an excellent program going with Girl Scouts in Oklahoma City and the surrounding areas. But Northeast Oklahoma City needs a lot of role models. We need volunteer leadership. Uh, presently, we have about 50 Girl Scouts in the Northeast, immediate Northeast Oklahoma City area. Some of these include uh, in-school program at Truman School, uh, Northeast Recreation Center, Douglas Recreation Center, Pitts Recreation Center, and St. John's. Uh, we need more. If you're interested in being a Girl Scout volunteer or if you're a girl interested in being involved in the Girl Scout program, 
you can call either myself, Toby Smith, or Etta Moore. We are field directors, uh, and the and the position that I have is a paid staff person who is interested in getting Girl Scouts going in the Northeast Oklahoma City area, Spencer, Midwest City, and Dell City. So give us a call, 528-3535. Thank you. And thank you for being my very distinguished guest today. And speaking of thank you, ABC Upholstery Company, located at 3723 Spring Lake Drive here in Oklahoma City, would like to thank you for your business the past year. Mr. Percy Hoard would like to invite you to come by the ABC Upholstery Company and see what all he can do. You would be surprised because if you're talking about upholstering, you're talking his language. If you're talking about uh, draperies, you're talking his language. Don't take my word for it. Go by the ABC Upholstery Company and see for yourself. Oklahoma City continues to grow and the telephone out here keeps ringing. Let it ring, let it ring. The House of Bingo tonight is located at 3641 uh, North, North Everett Street, 3642 North Everett, and that's where the movie will be showing at exactly 8 o'clock, and my good friend Mrs. Pollard will be there tonight, and we are going to have a good time, and I will see all of you at the big House of Bingo. As we look, Gates uh, Barbershop would like to, Mr. Robert Gates, located at 2609 Northeast, Northeastern, would like to send holiday greetings to you wherever you are. Mr. Ollie E. Dunlap is now selling beauty supplies, and he's selling them at a price you can afford. That's Ollie E. Dunlap here in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Get out your history book. See if anywhere in the world you have ever heard of a group of blacks or a black person leading a fight for neighborhood school. <coughs> I have never, I have never in my life heard of such. <coughs> but what do you think, Cal? Well, Mom, you know, I'm sitting in there and I'm catching some of the phone calls. And I'm really um, kind of confused still as to what the parents can do because they keep asking me, well, what does she want us to do about it? I mean, what can we do now to bring about a change if we're interested in the change or if we want to just leave it like it is? How can a, a just an average person or a patron of the school system, how can we let our school board member and the uh, uh, whole world know that we don't want to be uh, put back into a, a segregated society and what do we need to do to uh, let our feelings be known? But the first thing you do is to attend these meetings that are being held. Oh, but I don't have time to and, attend Okay, but call your, call your representative. Go down to the Board of Education. Talk to your superintendent. And they come up with great ideas. For example, the reason why they didn't want to get rid of slavery because it was not economical, feasible. The reason they wanted to get didn't want to get away from, well, from segregation because it would be dangerous to the health of a lot of people. So let your feelings be known. We might lose this fight. But I would rather lose a fight fighting for integration than to win a fight for segregation because I have sense enough to know that we are approaching the 21st century and the 21st century will not be a century of segregated jobs. It will be technical, Calvin. Well, well, Mom, don't you believe that the uh, school board is aware, basically, of uh, what, what some of the people in the community want? And then don't they realize that... Uh, if this is a step backwards, is, I mean, from the way you explain it. But all at once, after seven years, they feel sorry for poor little black kids. Where was that sympathy when the black kids from West Town was being transferred? Oh, I, I can see those tears, those crocodile tears. But I would hate to be a black person fighting for neighborhood schools. But I can say that at the Terrace Garden Nursing Home and Convalescent Center, which is completely integrated, located at 1921 Northeast 21st Street, the telephone number is 424-1449. That's a Terrace Gardens Nursing Home home here in Oklahoma City. The fact is that at Terrace uh, Garden, you have Mrs. Scruggs as administrator, and she's doing a terrific job. Here's Shelly. Shelly, what are you saying? What are you saying? Do you want to go back I, to do a segregated school? No. I should be able to mix with people of different nationalities because it will give me experience I will need later in life. Now, I understand that you went on a trip, on a science trip. Where was the parent from that took you on this trip? It was some teachers. Some teachers and some parents, and you rode with a parent. Where was that parent from? India. India. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you so very kindly. Let's expose our kids. Here we are. The telephone calls are coming in. The some won't segregated schools and the others won't integrated schools. 
Dude, what do you want? Do you want your child to grow up in a segregated society? It seems to me that the Board of, Educa the Board of Education say there will be some swimming pools. Now, I'm the mother of an 11-year-old, and that doesn't move me one bit because they, they have lack of hair knowledge. If my daughter just going to the beauty shop, you tell me, send her to, oh, my gracious, Clara Luber reported here at KAEZ, and I'm reporting for that Christmas special. Tell me about it, Calvin. That's right. It's Studio 75, and we're international photographers. We're having a very special Christmas special. We want this Christmas to be your most memorable Christmas. You can get in contact with us by dialing 239-6076 or stopping by 1209 Northeast 15th. We promise you great and fast service. That's from Calvin Luper with Studio 75 and Big Bud with International Photographers. We want to be your photographers. Calvin, I just received some sad news. We just lost Mr. Charlie Brooks, the, uh, fa the son the, his, the Charlie Brooks has a son that we know so well, Odell Brooks, and we would like to to extend our sympathy. His services are pending along with our longtime friend, Sonny Morrison. We extend our sympathy to the family. The issue that we are discussing today is segregated schools, resegregation, resegregation versus integration. They tell me there's no other way. If we don't do it, they're going to close down on us. But let me tell you a song that my mama taught me, the Lord will make a way somehow. They told us there was no way to integrate. They told us there was no way to integrate the restaurants, but we are eating that animals now. They told us that it couldn't be done, but it was done. When this community get ready to stand up and say, Board of Education, you might give us. A bacon powder can full of segregation, but we don't like it. We do not like segregation in any form. Dress it up in an evening gown, call it sovereignty. Dress it up in a tux and call it states' rights, but we still don't like segregation, and the majority of my radio audience is agreeing with me. Come on out to the house of bingo tonight and see what Martin Luther King did in order to live in a real world. And a slaughter, and incidentally, it's going to be done with integrated students. I want you to call integrated students. And one of the students is from Holland that's doing one of the senator's parts. Come out and see what can be done with integrated students. It, segregation is an evil. It's contrary to the law of God. Now, I'm going to say it quite so my Board of Education won't hear it. Board of Education, segregation is an evil. And if you resegregate the schools, you will be conducting an evil. Don't tell me it's not another way. I say let's call some specialists in. And what I would like to see done is to ask for a delay. Now, it shouldn't be so hot that we have to have it on February, on December the 17th. And closing high schools, closing class in high school for the first time, we have we have something going at class in high school. We have something going at, at, at Southeast High School, but they say close them. Let's look at the schools. Let them bring to us a proposal to, for improving what we have. Suppose we would spend some time showing how we can improve something rather than how we can tear it apart. Because if we tear this apart, in the next three years, we will have to redo it. And speaking of re redoing it, I've talked, my students are calling in, and they want integration now, henceforth, and forevermore. Well, that's what Abraham Lincoln said, freedom now. But then we got a new plan, the bacon powder plan. The bacon powder plan say, let's segregate the schools. Now, we have what it, some people have, magnet schools. Well, if it means integration, let's have one first grade center, second grade, third grade. Whatever it takes to integrate, let's integrate those of you that want it now, <coughs> what's your thinking um i'm i'm with your line of thinking but i would also like to offer a challenge to my friends and my students to meet me tonight at 8 p.m at the house of bingo 3617 north everest and please come and see martin king and what he went through see the students that are integrated and that are doing what they should be doing as a nation and as a whole this is anna slaughter and i challenge my students to meet me there well, I challenge Oklahoma City to meet us there. Let's look at what Martin Luther King did, because Martin Luther King said that segregation was wrong. Now, what once somebody call and say what the teachers can do? Well, it's, it's in the hands of the parents. Now, the black teachers know that what segregation will mean to them if they have read any history. If not, let me refresh your memory. Before, who's the first one? transferred and fired. Last year, all you educated blacks with your degrees in administration, what happened to you when the white principals decided that they wanted to take over? You went out 
like a flashlight. Clara Looper reported here. Well, here it is. We've only found two people. Out of all the people that have called out here, we've only found two people that was for resegregation. So the majority of the Clara Lupa's audience, which is the most intelligent to radio audience in the world, say, we want integration. Now, if the Board of Education, the three-member board, if you don't know how to do it, call somebody in that know how to do it, because it must be a way. Today, I have dealt with one of the most controversial, one of the most con controversial things in the world, education. But out of education comes everything else. I spent most of my life fighting for integration. I stood in line from 1958 to 1964 to try to get a hamburger for my people. But I know now that unless we get the proper education in an integrated setup, I know that we will never be able to get the hamburgers and the steaks and the jobs and things that we are talking about. So I say to my Board of Education, to my representative, Brother Mukes, let's look at it a second time. Let's delay the plan until we have had time to study the plan and bring experts in here. Because the question that the Board of Education must answer is the segregation of children. Even though the facilities are equal, is it inherently unequal? I stand today with the Warren Court. I stand with Dr. Kenneth Clark. I stand with Martin Luther King and say segregation is wrong. Now, if we should lose, if we should lose, for God's sake, I would hate to hear a black out here crying for neighborhood schools because you have joined that group of Wallaces. You are with Phobos. You are with anybody that hate. Now, the, it's not the buses. It's us. And if you take a black child and sit that black child in the classroom, he'll learn. Somebody say you have to learn by whites. I am saying that segregation, and I'm not saying it. Martin Luther King said it far better than I, that segregation is an evil. And when you try to resegregate the Oklahoma City schools, you have opened a bag of Clara Looper reported KAEZ radio here in Oklahoma City. I would like to invite any of you that's in favor of segregation to be my distinguished guest next week on this program because you have a right to give your opinion. I have given mine. And whatever anybody says, just remember Clara Looper is for integration because I love my children black, white, red, yellow, and polka dots. Yes, Goodbye, darling. I do love you. you. See you at the house. Please. The views expressed in the program just heard were those of our guests. Wait, 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 w